CFRE Radio with your boy DJ Frank Vinatra, and today we have a special guest with us. Um, let me not slack on the introductions. Let me get with a little backstory. So not too long ago, I got a little email from my boy DJ Andre905, and the headline said, UK R&B Fire, and everybody knows me, knows I love my R&B. So I was like, all right, let's tap into this. Let's see what it is. I pressed play, and I was like, oh, hold on. This is a bop. What's going on here? What's going on? So decided to head over to Apple Music, found this album called Listen Up, went through the whole album and was like, yo, this is fire. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce everybody straight from the UK. Ray, Ray, what's going on? Hi, I'm good. Thank you. It's actually pronounced R-A-E. It's R-A. OK, so I meant to I meant to ask you that. I was trying to figure it out because I realized it was stylized in an acronym. So I was like, oh, I don't know if it's Ray or it's R-A-E. So does that stand for anything in particular? Um, yeah, it stands for rising above everything. Oh, I like that. I like that. All right. Thank so you. let's start with the little formalities. Um, let's give everybody a quick rundown about yourself and, you know, just tell them, no, who is R-A-E? Um, so hi guys, I'm RAE. I am a rapper slash singer songwriter from London, South East London to be specific. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah, I've been like writing since I was 10, but I started doing it professionally last year, February. Oh, wow. So you're, you just started taking it seriously. So technically, like this is your rookie year, essentially. Yeah. Pretty much. All right, all right. So you're putting up numbers in the rookie year. Let's just uh let's put that out there. All right, you can go over yeah. some serious numbers. All right. Thank so you. you have this new project out. It's called Listen Up, and you got the hit single. Well, I like to call it like this, which seems to yeah. be doing very well. So how's the response been so far with everything? It's been really good. I think out of all my songs, this has probably been the most like interaction. Mm-hmm and um worldwide interaction actually um because i don't know i guess the word like the meaning of the song um, resonates with a lot of people and um a lot of people can relate to it yeah but yeah no no it's about i think when i heard it i had like a a feeling of nostalgia right from the get-go because like you know i like my 90s i like my early 2000s r&b so it had that kind of vibe to it and then it was it was just a bop altogether. i was like yo you can't like as soon as it comes on it's like oh all right, let me get into it. Let me get into it. All right, cool. So, how did that whole project like come about? Was it something just spur of the moment, or is it something that you wanted to do for a while? Or okay, so um, originally I was supposed to record an LP, mm-hmm. and then um, my team were like, "Oh, um, the songs on that project are actually quite like really good for releasing it this year. So let's try something different and do like a EP, mm-hmm. another EP." So we went away for four days and basically made this EP in four days. Oh, wow. Um, from beats down to the lyrics and recording. Yeah, so it was like a whole process. And when I when we were making it, I think I had in mind that I just wanted people to listen up. Yeah. And so a lot of the songs are about, it's basically like listening to me, but also listening to what's going on around the world. So I we're hoping people would can relate so would you say this was technically kind of like your even though you've had previous music out before but would you say this is kind of like your introduction into like the music scene or into people essentially um i would say it would i would say it was i guess it's like a part two introduction because i have an ep out already yeah and but that i feel like that was my that was my introduction but i'd say this one was more of a a worldwide introduction all right all right so what's the COVID situation like over there in uk i know here in toronto we're on lockdown so are you guys on lockdown are you guys free to move around um well we just came out of lockdown last week i think but they went on lockdown for um a month four weeks yeah we've been we're Technically, the end of this month, it'll be a month, but they just said that they're moving it to January 20th. So we're going to be in lockdown for a little bit more. Yeah, they want to put us in tier three. They want to put us into like lockdown again, kind of um, on the 21st. So how has it been like promoting with a new single, a new project out? How has it been, you know, promoting that in the midst of the pandemic? Like, how have you been maneuvering around to make sure, you know, everybody hears your music? 
Um, I mean, besides from not having to perform anywhere, it hasn't really been any different to how people would usually promote their stuff because a lot of promotion happens online anyway. Yeah. So it's literally just been word of mouth, um, Spotify playlists, Apple Music playlists, just get it like interacting with like your <laughs> fans and then they tell other people about it. Yeah, it's not well, been it, se- it seems to be working because yeah, uh, it's reaching over here in Toronto. It's like you said, it's having yeah. it's having great global success. So um, you know, congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. Yeah, so um in today's music, you're starting to see like a, a heavy 90s, early 2000 influence, but you seem to embrace that culture like straight to its core from the sound to its style is that something you've always wanted to do or is that something the team thought about doing like can you speak a little bit about that yeah so like I've always been a 90s fanatic like literally from a kid Mm -hmm. um as I was born in the 90s but um I think when I watched Sister Act it was such a it, it was such a, an experience that I always wanted to be a part of and I my li- whole life was basically based on like I don't know how to say it. like I see my life as, as a 90s sitcom oh, okay <laughs> so like everything around me is 90s influenced so it just naturally it was like even when I used to rap on the playground I my raps were like storytelling and I feel like a lot of music in the 90s was storytelling Mm-hmm. And the flows were always like the 90s. So just starting out in music, naturally, it was just a 90s flow, oh. feeling, experience. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. That's dope. So the Like This remix is also out. And you've tried to change yeah. that up a little bit. You put a little Spanish flair into there. So what yeah. was the reason for that? Did you want to tap into a new demographic or? Um, no, actually, um, the majority of my fan base is actually like Spanish speaking. Oh, wow. So I thought I would just give them a present by putting a really big um, or known Spanish artist on the song. And um, Alicia, she, thank you. She was like really happy to do it because she loves the song. And yeah, that's literally how like the connection happened. Mm. So it seems like you're very in tune with your fans and their needs, like what they want from you. And you really present them with that. Is that something that... Um, you know, the whole team, your whole team thinks about doing, are you really strong on reading your analyticals from your Spotify and those kind of things to make sure you're providing your fans with what they really want? Uh, yeah, my team definitely look at analytics and stuff. That's like not my thing, but um, <laughs> they look at it and they're like, oh, like you've got like a massive fan base in like South America, like Europe, Spain. Um, and I've actually like gained a lot of fans in like um, Hong Kong as well. Oh, wow. So it's just like, because like I feel like in, in the UK, a lot of artists tend to uh, want to cater to the UK ears, mm-hmm. but some but the UK is very like stubborn. They don't they're kind of stubborn and and um, like they don't like to listen to anything except from what's put in your face. So um for some artists um on um, on the come up as well, it can be really disheartening when the UK don't support you. Mm-hmm. And I'm like a big like believer in just going where you're celebrated. And since like people around the world are celebrating me why not cater to them and then maybe the uk will come will come along like one day well well the uk is on a rise right now you guys have a really you know bumping music scene out there that you guys sustain on your own without you know international or anything like that yeah we do but like we do i i can't um disagree with that we actually do but like um so most of the sound is very typical Gotcha, gotcha. I hear. Uh, yeah. yeah, you are very different, at, different from other UK like music that I usually hear. So I can definitely agree with you on that one. I know the Toronto and the UK culture definitely. You know, we have a lot of our Toronto artists that go over to the UK because we sound similar, so they want to get tapped into that UK market. So it's good to be different. It's good to be different. Yeah. It's working out for you. So, uh, so you. what can we look forward for you in 2021? Anything new coming out? Any new projects? Everybody should be looking forward to. Yeah, so in 2021, you should look out for and look forward to an album. I'm going to probably release my debut album. Um, Probably more collabs because I think that's actually quite fun. It's good to tap into different people's markets. Could we possibly see a UK Toronto collab going down there somewhere or? (laughs) You know, that could possibly happen. All right. I can tap you in. If anything, we can tap this in and get this working. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, definitely. That would be that would be sick. All right. Yeah. 
and um, just small vibes. Oh, and also risers line of ooh, clothes. Okay. Speak on that. What's the risers? So um I call so my name is Rising Above Everything and mm-hmm. I call my fan base Risers as like a positive acronym, positive man um word. You know, we should always rise. And so I created a line called Risers just for the supporters, really. Okay. Yeah. So I'm I'm gonna have to get me a Risers bucket hat and make sure I'm supporting out here because like I Thank said, you. I've been supporting the music since I got it. It's been dope. No if fans or buts. So it was only right that I got you on the show to make sure, you know, get the Toronto market. I, I've actually, it's pretty funny. I've seen since I've posted that video, I've had a couple of people message me and be like, oh my God, I know Ray. I listened to Ray. She's from the UK. And I was like, oh crap. Uh, I didn't even know there was Toronto people that knew this. So it was great. That's great to see that we're happening. But uh, I appreciate cool. you for taking the time, you know, having this little interview with her. Is there anything else you would like to say to your fans, the people of Toronto, anywhere else around the world? Um... <laughs> Um, I would just say, keep rising, focus, and don't worry. Anything that's meant for you will never pass you. Oh, that's a dope message. That's a dope message. So thank you again for RAE. I'm not going to, you know, keep calling it Ray. It's RAE now. So now that I know. But thank you for joining us here on CFRE Radio. Everybody tap in with RAE. Hit her up on Spotify, Instagram, Apple Music. Her new project, Listen Up, is out now. She has a new single called Like This and the remix is out. All the music is fire. Trust me, I don't promote crap shit. She's fire. (laughs) Make sure you tap in with her. Thank you very much. And like I always say, love yourself, love your neighbor, stay blessed. Am I dreaming? Can I just be 